I'd like to call the fourth meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. You know you are on the right track when you become uninterested in looking back. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll for attendance? There are 15 present. Alderman Mike Damro is excused. We'll, next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes of our last meeting. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, the mayor's appointments lie over. Uh, we'll move next to the confirmation of mayor's appointments. City attorney. Normally I would read the appointment as well the first time you want me to please, do that. Please do. So the appointment that's lying over is uh, from the mayor submitting the following appointment for your confirmation. <clears throat> Mark Belkey to serve as the Sheboygan Area School Board Representative on the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force Committee term to expire on April 23rd, 2017. Uh, as for the ones for uh, a confirmation of mayor's appointments, submitting the following appointments for your confirmation. Alder person Rosemary Trester to be considered for appointment to the County Emergency Medical Services Council for the term May 2016 to 2018. Uh, submitting uh, various appointments to the uh, committee structure subcommittee established according to resolution number 165-1516. Uh, Mary Lynn Donahue, Joe Heideman, Roman Drawn, Mike Vandersteen as voting members, non-voting members, Daryl Hoffman, Charles Adams, Susan Richards. Uh, submitting the following appointment to the uh, Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet. Joe Clark is the primary representative. Ryan Berg is the alternate representative for terms expiring April 30, 2017. And uh, Alderperson Rosemary Trester to be considered for appointment to the Historic Pre Preservation Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission term to expire on April 27, 2017. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to confirm the appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in, well, we have to call the roll for this one, I'm sorry. <coughs> Clerk, call the roll, please. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to a presentation of what's happening in Sheboygan in 2016 by Chad Pelichek, the Director of Planning and Development. Thank you. Um, just to, as a brief bit of introduction, there's a lot going to be happening this year, so I wanted to run through some of the key projects that we've been working on, uh, both us and our partners. Uh, primarily, our partners are the Sheboygan Squared Business Improvement District and the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. So if you can go to the next slide. So what I'm going to run through today is um, the three new housing, downtown housing developments that total about $37.1 in new value once completed. Um, the development of what we're calling at this stage the Art Square which is the green space adjacent to the former Boston store property as part of that development plan. Um, the Levitt Am Concert Series, um, some new businesses coming to the downtown in the 2016 year, um, some other citywide developments and uh, recent business development loans. Uh, talk about the Sheboygan Square Trolley System update, a downtown retail recruitment strategy, uh, and then what we're calling enlivening enlivening urban spaces. It's something we learned when we toured to Holland, Michigan. And then lastly, a downtown storefront beautification. So if you go to the next page, some of you have seen this already. This is the development plan for the Oak Brook development on the former Boston store property. On the north side or the top of the picture, you can see how the building will sit on that property. So on the, your 
on your left is the library, on your right is the art center. Um, and then the develop and then this development requires some modifications to the parking lot on the north side, which I'll talk about shortly. If you can go to the next slide. So this is an 81 market rate unit development with 4,054 square feet of uh, retail on the first floor in uh, off of A Street. Underground heated parking. It's a 10.3 million dollar project um, set to begin in June. So we're uh, at the point where we've got a soils management plan that's been submitted to the DNR, we're waiting for them to approve it. Um, as you know, we ran into some old uh, concrete foundations related to the former Pringy store that burnt, I believe, in 1973. Um, it appears at that time what they did is they pushed anything that didn't burn in the hole and covered it over and built that new store on top of its slab on grade at that point and didn't worry about what's underneath there. So. Um, there's a number of concrete, there's metal shelving, there's rebar, there's everything, wood, everything you can imagine is in there. So we've got a plan um, to try to minimize those costs uh, and keep project, the project on task. So they're hoping to be able to begin right after Memorial Day. Um, it's a combination of one and two bedroom apartments and this community room that overlooks what we're calling the art green. So the next slide shows an elevation of what that will look like looking south to north. Um, the area that's open is the area where we'll be developing out some of the green space enhancements. Next slide. This is a drawing that just shows the uh, landscape plan, but it, what I want to show you is the northern parking lot. So at Parking, parking and Transit Commission, we've talked about this and approved some uh, parking agreements. The plan is for them to have 43 dedicated surface spots for the development as well as the underground parking. Um, they will be paying a parking assessment of about 15000 a year for those lots for maintenance. So the parking uh, utility will continue to maintain those um, spots, but we're required to do some enhancements as part of this project to really green it up and um, develop kind of their main entrance. So different than most of buildings on 8th Street, this building spans between 8th and 7th Street, and their front door is on the north side of the building. So where you see this big circle showing on there, that's the front entrance to this development, and they want to be able to designate that, that that is indeed where people should come in, drop people off, pick people up. People will be moving in and out of that um, location. That's the front door to it, given the fact that they've got retail on 8th Street, and then this kind of like community space on the other side, this is their front door in between that comes out onto the parking lot. Next slide. So this is just a uh, rendering that was approved by the Architecture Review Board of what it will look like, uh, primarily from the A Street side. So the, um, that's the frontage that has the retail um, and then kind of the concept of some landscaping that'll happen as part of it. And what we've really worked hard on this development to do is to try to build a segregated um, kind of like property line, if you will, between the private development and the public development without putting in uh, fencings and, and those types of things that really are barriers. So you're going to see landscaping and different kind of hedgerows laid out in the final plan that really separates that space. Um, but all it all looks like one space so that we don't have this um, kind of like dividing line down the middle. Next slide. So we've talked about the uh, Levitt Amp concert series. It, we made a, a press release last week that it's going to be held at the Art Center um, just on the sheer fact of this extra work we have to do at the Boston Store property is going to not allow us to host the concerts on that property because some of that property is going to have to be uh, land is going to have to be dug up as part of this um, to try to save costs. So uh, later this month, you'll see construction fencing going up over that entire area, um, and they're going to be using that entire area for their development plan. So the concert series is moving back over to the northwest corner of the Arts Center, and then we'll be closing off North 7th Street and Wisconsin Avenue as part of that. Next slide. So this is kind of the concept. We're in final design with the architect to lay out the space. So this is looking south to north, and the idea is to have some type of that light blue area down on the, on the southern side of the lot or the bottom is um, where this art mic stage from the art center will be incorporated into a larger stage with some type of straight shade structure over the top of it. And then those wider gray lines are, are sidewalk connectors, and those thinner lines across there are raised 
um, like ledge walls, if you will. So if you came to a venue and you didn't have a chair um, or your own blanket, you'd have a little bit of a raised ledge to sit on. So it kind of is this in sort of this smaller like amphitheater feel, albeit that there's not going to be a lot of great change through it, but it's it's stacked up to be able to hold a number of people and give some different options for people to see it, sit. It, next slide. If you look at this slide, this shows 450 people standing in that area. So this is a fairly large area. Um, we've seen uh, upwards of 1,200 to 1,500 uh, participants. So this area definitely can hold that. Um, and it's, it's really geared towards opening up and, and really providing some venue for arts and culture and, and different venues to happen in this area to try to leverage it. Also in 2017 and 2018, we're working with the Arts Center on a Connecting Communities <coughs> project that would bring crawlable, or, or what, how do I want to say it? Um, not crawlable, but user-friendly sculptures where it would be almost like playground-type structures, but they would be art sculptures that um, people might be able to crawl inside of and read a book or something like that to try to leverage the space on the off-concert series time. So we're looking at how to leverage the space year-round. So, like I said, we'll continue the concert series on Thursday nights. Um, the space uh, ultimately will be used for a variety of different things. The Mead Public Library has shown some interest in other civic organizations. We just haven't developed a very detailed calendar at this stage because we want to wait till we get the final development done and then work through some programming from then on. Um, and like I said, we're working with a public art project with the Art Center, so you'll see more of that coming out uh, here in the next year. Next slide. The second site is the South A Street site. So this is, I've heard some comments from aldermen as to when that's going to start. This is the property next to the St. Cyril or Kitty Corner from the chamber. Um, they're planning to come into the Planning Commission in early June for approval of their plans and uh, breaking ground with an early construction start sometime in the middle of July. This is 91 market rate apartments with rooftop decks and penthouse suites, one to three bedroom units. It's a $15.1 million project. Again, it has underground parking, a fitness room, a media room, and construction to begin in July. The, you've seen this drawing. This is it. They've changed it a little bit. It's coming in. Um, they've updated the exterior and kind of made it more fit in more now that we've, they've seen the design for the, former, for the new C's building just down the street. Um, so they're trying to tie it all together so that it doesn't look like it sits out in the middle of nowhere. And, and I think when we see the new design, it'll be nice because they've really tried to augment what's happening in that district. The last project is the um, South Pier Waterfront Homes. So this was recently approved before the Common Council reorganized, and it's for 88 units to be built in the interior lots at South Pier. Um, so when you're looking at this drawing, uh, phase one is actually on your right, so it's the larger parcel in the long strip. Um, that's phase one, and then the, f the two other parcels would be phase two. Phase one is slated to begin after Lakeshore Weekend for the kids on August 1st, and then phase two would start one year later on August 1st of 2017. Um, and they'll, it's about 52 units to start, and then the remainder, 30-some units, uh, would be constructed next year. Next slide. So this is the drawing of the units. They're working again on facades and colors and layouts and all of that kind of stuff. But conceptually and structural, this is what they're thinking um, the buildings are going to look like. Um, they're working to come into Planning Commission for final approval and architectural review in June as well. So um, they're on track to start the first phase in, in August. This is 88 market rate rentals. Um, it's a project of about $11.8 Combination of one and two bedroom units with private entrances, their own attached one and two car garages, designer kitchens, and large patios and decks. So what, one thing I will say is um, a lot of people have said, <coughs> can the market support this many houses? Um, I think we have three really different um, potentially uh, groups of people to go in these, demographics of people to go in these housing units. Um, you know, some that the, the younger professionals coming into the market may want to live downtown at the Boston store more than um, maybe some empty nesters or early retirees, and yet some of the early retirees people and the empty nesters have shown interest in these um, townhome type development down on South Pierce. So I think there's definitely a, a different demographic 
potential for each of them. Now, don't get me wrong, there could be some mix across them, but there are, it's definitely three different products. The other th project is not really market rate, but this is um, Reed and Steve Schmidt have purchased the former um, Sheboygan uh, Health Senior Community Center and are converting it into dorm-style housing um, to house corporate inter interns and co-op and college students. So phase one of this project is 149 beds um, to be available sometime mid to late May, and the second phase is 115 beds. So what they're doing is um, converting a property that wasn't on the tax roll that will now be on the tax roll into a need that I think is there from the standpoint of the Kohler company, for example, brings in a lot of interns that work in all of their facilities. A lot of these people come in from international companies and they house them right now all over the county and they shuttle them into the resorts and into the golf courses. So their concept here is to put um, their people in here, have a one-stop destination. Um, the intent is for uh, there be a, some kind of joint between the kitchen that's in the facility, because that kitchen right now still provides meals for the Landmark Square apartments. Um, so these people could get some meals there. They're looking at developing a theater as part of it. So it would it's going to be bringing in a number of interns, for example, and some of our larger resorts are also looking at it in some other companies um, to really bring in uh, you know a demographic of, of kids if you will, um, younger generation people that are working at a lot of our resorts um, to house them here. And, and this is a captive audience, and I think this is an audience that will be beneficial to our downtown businesses. So um, this is a great reuse of the building, and they've developed a great plan with it. So this is just their marketing flyer um, coming soon and what they're planning to do and some of their amenities with the property. Next slide. Um, we're also working with the Parker Johns to build a new restaurant in the former Mucky Duck site. Um, construction has begun last week, so they started digging foundations. Um, this is a $1.1 million project um, for a restaurant that par serves primarily barbecue but does have pizza um, with the intent of trying to open this thing in October. Next slide. So this is what the plan is to look like. It's a um, shanty-style uh, final infill development, but it's going to have a number of windows and some windows that open over the lake and dining above and dining below. So I think it's a great um, potential, you know, reuse of the Mucky Duck site and really filling in the last available site on the riverfront. <coughs> Next slide. Some other two uh, key businesses, and if you've driven down A Street, you've seen Art and Soul, the former Jooms property. They're opening up all the windows. They're building a design and consignment shop for local artists, artists to display and sell their artwork. Um, and they'll also be providing some classroom space for um, classrooms to occur in that building. And the second business is right, uh, right around the corner here called Board and Brush, and it's a retail art studio with instructional woodworking workshops and, and malted beverages served during the classes. So the next this is a, a rendering of what they submitted to the Architecture Review Board for that uh, building, and I think the key piece here is the fact that they're opening up all the windows that are along Penn Avenue that have been boarded up for a lot of years, um, and really kind of changing the look of this building with some new colors and some uh, design of some artists and trying to keep some of the old qualities of Jooms, i.e. the sign, um, and incorporating that into it, but really enhancing the prod property. Is This is really, in a planning standpoint, this is really a key property in our downtown. Eighth and Penn is a key corner for all of the traffic that comes to our lakefront. So having a um, nice building with a, with a good mix of tenants on that corner has always been a key uh, goal of ours. Next slide. This is just a picture of board and brush. If you haven't been there yet to build, make your own signs, I guess it's supposed to be a blast. I have not been there myself. But the lady on the right is Julie. She's the owner. She's got seven of these locations, and she's opening up seven more in 2016. So this is a tried and true model, so it should be a successful business. And it really plays into the arts and culture district that we've been uh, pushing as part of the master plan to develop in the downtown. The other project is, this is the property uh, for the Fairfield Inn and Suites. The, uh, the Common Council approved a development agreement for 
a $5.5 million, 160 room <coughs> Fairfield Inn and Suites to be built on this property. So this property is on the bottom is South Taylor Drive and the railroad tracks on South Taylor Drive. So this is the this is two properties, if you will, south of the Holiday Inn, Inn Express. It's about a five acre parcel. The plan is to build two hotels here. They're starting with a Fairfield Inn and Suites. Secondly, they'll build a courtyard uh, pending some wetland issues. Um, but they're slated to begin construction um, this fall. And as part of that development agreement, the city has to extend the sanitary sewer and put in a uh, turn lane into the uh, median, a median cut in a turn lane, uh, a project of about two hundred and fifty to $300,000. So um, we looked at it as a great, if they create the $5.5 million, the return on investment is less than a year, and it gets us another hotel in our market. Then I just wanted to run through some recent business development loans. So the Redevelopment Authority administers the city's revolving loan fund for business creation. Um, and we've made a ton of loans in the last couple months. Chuck and I have been very busy, and Nancy, uh, working through that. But uh, they approved a $250,000 note to Spreckers for, to create 25 new jobs. Now, this is a program that's based on uh, new job creation, so it's a job creation-funded program, so you're going to see it all focused around job creation. But uh, Three Sheeps Brewery for 375000 to create 15 new jobs. The Sign Shop of Sheboygan, 100000 to create four new jobs. Uh, Paper Box Specialty, 100000 to create four new jobs. Uh, doing LLC or the Little Caesars on the south side that's going into a strip center down there, $70,000 to create three new jobs. Uh, E-Power Manufacturing, which is a new LED power, uh, LED um, related business that's building LED fixtures, $300,000 to create 13 new jobs. And Parker Johns, which is the development on the uh, riverfront of $125,000 to create 20 new jobs. So the basis here is that it's about $25,000 per new job created. Um, if we can get more jobs out of the entity, we'll do so. So that's why there's not really a um, given as to how many jobs to create. It's really on the discretion of the RDA. Next slide. The downtown trolley service. So you've seen this on last year. We ran a downtown dedicated bus service, and this was part of the master plan of really trying to connect the South Pier Riverfront and downtown. Um, so that's going to continue this year from Memorial Day to Labor Day. It's $1 to ride all day. Last year it saw 1,600 participants. Um, the hope is in the future to be able to forward in the budget to expand this to a Sunday service. Um, and then it is going to start out by running with a current wrap bus and then move to a tr new trolley. So if you go to the next page, you've seen this on the bus. This was a design done out of our, our office. Um, and this was the dedicated bus, but next slide. We're hoping to go to this. So we just secured an uh, arrangement with the city of Green Bay, who has two running trolleys like this and one for parts. And the transit authority has been up there, and they've looked at this, and they think it's a great investment. We secured them for $8,000. So these buses will be out on the route, and it'll be the dedicated trolley so that we can start branding around this connection through the downtown um, I know it says title town trolley. The intent is to change it to be called the Sheboygan trolley, but the city of Green Bay used this to transport people to Lambeau Field. That's why they're painted uh, green and gold. Next slide. So we've heard a lot from people that, you know, we need to work on our downtown retail, downtown retail, shopping, boutique retail. So I think before this, we, before we had these housing developments, it was difficult because we didn't have the demographics in our downtown to do that. Going forward, knowing that our demographics are probably going to be changing substantially with these new housing developments and new incomes coming in, we really believe the time is now to start this uh, recruitment. So um, the plan is we've developed a five-step approach, but the real plan is to develop, to hire a recruiter who is a retired business owner um, that a business person that's been in retail for 30-some years, her and her husband are going to go out and do some cold calls, if you will, marketing to prospective businesses. So we've developed a list of 20 to 25 businesses that we think would be wonderful in the downtown and wouldn't compete with existing businesses, um, but would kind of add to that whole shopping experience. So this uh, husband and wife duel are going to go out and um, talk to these businesses and talk about what's happening in the downtown and encourage them to consider us as a second or a third location. 
We're also looking at developing, we've done this developer summit we've talked about in the past where we've invited developers from the outside in on a yearly basis and kind of show, showcased our downtown and our community. Um, this year we're going to be tailoring it towards the retailers. So we're hoping to bring in retailers from the outside and get them interested in the market and see what we all have to offer from both the quality of life and the economic standpoint. So we developed a downtown recruitment uh, brochure, which you see here in our office. It's actually in the print shop today and should be ready tomorrow. But this is going to be the piece that tells our story. It's a 12-page document that talks about everything that's changed um, or is changing and our traffic counts and why people would want to invest in our downtown. So you'll be getting a copy of this shortly as soon as it gets done at the press. The last thing I just want to roughly run through is this enlivening, under, enlivening, underutilized urban spaces. So when we took a tour of Holland, Michigan, and Grand Haven last fall, a number of us went over there. One of the things we noticed is they've done a very good job of connecting these underutilized corridors. So we have a lot of underutilized corridors in our downtown um, that really... Uh, serve a purpose, but people are afraid to go through. So, for example, like the black at the Black Pig, there's a alley that connects Lot 14, the parking lot, with the street. When there's a venue going on at the Wild Center, a lot of people park at Lot 14 and walk through this corridor, but they say they don't feel safe because, number one, the lights aren't very bright and it just doesn't feel like a sense of place. So we've identified five or six key areas to focus in on, and with the partnership with the Business Improvement District, we're going to be making some enhancements. The five locations um, are the library plaza, the fountain at the library, uh, the alley between the Black Pig and Erdman's, the alley between the U.S. Bank and Subway, and an alley between Mavericks and the former Dirk's, Dirkus Law Office. So next slide. You've all seen this. This is the library fountain uh, when it's operating. Um, go to the next slide. This is what we're planning to do. We're planning to install some uh, be, uh, some tables with umbrellas in that area because we've heard that people are drawn to water. Um, and there's really no um, place for people to come and eat their lunch or read a book or you know just be there and, and have a place to sit. So the Business Improvement District has funded uh, the purchase of some tables and, and um, umbrellas that will be installed kind of in that lower area, as well as some enhancements. You can see some greening up of it. So the intent is to try to get some of the plants to grow over the edge, maybe add some planters in some of those concrete areas to bring in some more flowers without changing the design of the helper and fountain, but just bring in some enhancements to it to make it uh, feel like it belongs as part of the overall plan. Next slide. So the, um, the other place that we're looking is the corner um, there's a planter there with some uh, trees and shrubs that are overgrown, and that'll be uh, ripped out by the parking utility, and some new perennials that would blossom different times of the year will be installed as part of that. This is the library plaza, so this is the area to the east of the library, and we've it's got this huge sea of concrete that really doesn't, in my mind, have a key purpose. So the thought is um, to develop some type of, if you go to the next slide, to develop some type of um, segregation of that and maybe some like astroturf or something on that means where people could come and play beanbag toss or ladder golf or bocce ball or something in their noon hour to try to energize that space and get more people out on the um, out in the street so that it, you just have that sense of place as you, when you're in the downtown, it doesn't look like a ghost town. So this is a, a project we're looking to maybe do later this summer, but um, it's really just about trying to enhance that area on the east side of the library. Next slide. These are two pictures of the alley between the black pigs. So you can see the picture on your left is the way it looks today. On the right is what we're proposing to do, um, adding some greening and some additional... Um, signage and stuff to bring to make people want to travel through these areas. This slide shows the subway and the U.S. Bank. Uh, again, the same thing, and maybe even some public art on those corridors as a second phase. We've looked at lighting. We we believe lighting is key, so we've got somebody hired to look at um, designing LED lighting that would string across there and look like the old LED, the old lighting you used to see in used car lots, those larger bulbs, they make it in LED and it hardly takes any uh, power. So the intent is to try to maybe string some of these across there to really light these areas up and make people want to be there. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of other examples of the, what you can do with lighting as well. 
And then lastly, the, the public art concept, so that you can see some different concepts as to what part public art would look like in these areas. Interestingly enough, the picture that's on the top right in the middle is all those noodles that kids would play with in, the, in a, uh, pl in a play, uh, swimming pool, and they're all glued on the wall and, and kind of, you know, not that we'd be able to do that. But anyway, it's kind of cool. Lastly, next slide. We're looking at some shade structures. So you saw that on the art concept, the green space, this shade structure, and then trying to bring some more shade out into the street and primarily the east side of the library in that plaza um, as a second or third phase to try to uh, you know, just bring some creativity to those areas. The last project is the, um, art, the Sheboygan Squared has worked with all of their businesses, and they've got 54 businesses that have agreed to uh, take care of uh, a pot of flowers uh, in the front of their business, and that's another thing we saw when we were in Holland is that they had a lot of flowers on their street, and it really greened it up and made you want to be there. So they've um, gotten most of their businesses on board with um, putting out these, taking care of these pots. So you're going to see all these pots coming out on June 6, really enhancing the streetscape along the street as you drive, as well as the continuation of the hanging baskets and those larger pots that the Garden Club does. So um, there's been a key initiative to really work on beautification. And that's Thank all you very I much, have. Chad. And if there's any, any questions, questions for Chad, thanks. Thank you. Good stuff. Next, we'll move on to the uh, public forum. Let me just get to it. Hold on. Okay, this evening we have one speaker, Debbie Day Milan. If you could come up to the front, please. <coughs> and Debbie, can I have your home address? Yeah, it's 1704 North 35th Street, Sheboygan. North what? I'm sorry, what? North 35th, 35. And you will have five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to bring to your attention um, what was decided upon about a year ago with um, about the Field of Dreams, the transfer to the Boots and Property. Um, and um, because I think the city of Sheboygan cannot really afford it. So I sent a letter to each one of you and so a, a bunch of... Um, other papers, but um, I'm just going to go over it really quickly. So the the Rettler Corporation's preliminary cost estimate of um, four million seven hundred thousand, I'm rounding off, is for phase one alone. Phase one is just half the project, and that's um, Aurora's contribution to this cost is only two million two hundred thousand. The city's contribution uh, was supposed to be eight hundred thousand. And that would make a total of $3 million, which comes short of the preliminary cost estimate of $1,700,000. And add this to what we're contributing, the $800,000, um, and that would make $2,500,000 that the taxpayers would need to foot the bill for to complete the phase one. And so my question is, where will this money come from? Um, I want to keep, uh, us to keep in mind that this estimate dates back to January 7th, uh, 2014, so obviously the costs will increase and most likely come over $3 million that we would be required to uh, finance. Um, not count, you know, that's not the total cost, that's what the city taxpayers would have to finance. Additional missing costs for phase one that weren't count, accounted for in Rettler's preliminary costs or unable to reasonably estimate included um, lighting for soccer fields, seating, scoreboards, equipment, furniture and supplies for concessions, complex field maintenance costs during the growth, and city infrastructure costs, which would be like sidewalks to the boots and complex, turn lanes, stop signs, or lights, and all that. And then none of this includes the yearly maintenance on these fields, which uh, will amount to approximately $150,000 a year using um, Shields Soccer Complex and Appleton as a comparable. And finally, this is only phase one. Phase two was estimated to cost over $4,500,000. Um, and then I attached all the, the different estimates Sheboygan soccer and Sheboygan football's um, tax returns showing what they cannot, uh, you, you know, what that they cannot afford the one million seven hundred thousand dollars for phase one because 
um, their tax returns on line 18 show that they don't have a whole lot of excess. Anyway, the city's already trying to find ways to find, uh, finance the repair of our roads, and taxpayers have already been burned with a wheel tax, a $20 wheel tax. So I'd like to know how much more can the citizens be taxed for uh, replacing fields that are already in, you know, I just drove by them today, and they're in working order. They're filled today, and they've been filled a lot recently. The minute the weather gets good, we've got a lot of people out there. So why replace them? Um, it's overly generous of the city to give Aurora for free the acreage of the Boots and Property, um, even if we get, use, get to use the Boots and Property, which was supposed to be an equestrian farm for kids, according to the Boots and Will. Why did the city decide to allow it to be developed for private soccer and football clubs rather than for public use to benefit all of Sheboygan citizens, who are the ones who are currently responsible for funding it? So we fund the development of it, but it's private. It'll be for private use. And then um, the Sheboygan Area School District gets out of these costs, um, and they are transferred to us, the city taxpayers. And so my question is, why are we getting stuck with this bill and the maintenance fee responsibilities that should have been the school district's responsibilities? And why are we allowing this to happen when there are so many future unknown costs? So the reason I bring all this up is because we can reverse the zoning of the Field of Dreams back to what it was previously to encourage Aurora to find a more suitable project less costly to Sheboygan taxpayers. We can hold Aurora off until they provide us with the information that would guarantee that this project can be fully funded by Aurora, including the yearly maintenance, by other than the Sheboygan taxpayers. If Aurora cannot reassure us that we won't be stuck with a bill exceeding taxpayer capacity, then we can direct them to choose a more appropriate commercial property in Sheboygan that is already zoned for their purposes, which would lighten all costs, including infrastructure that has not yet been assessed at all. So, uh, you know, I, th I think we have to look at this because their uh, initial promise was that it would all be completed, but... Excuse when you me, Debbie. I'm done. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. There are no other... On public forum. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the mayor's uh, point announcements. May 15th through the 17th is going to be National Public Works Week, and I have a proclamation to deliver to David Beeble on behalf of the Department of Public Works in the city. Whereas the public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas support and understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of the public work systems and programs, such as water, sewers, streets, and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. And whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff the Public Works Department is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work that they perform. I, Mike Vandersteen, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of May 15th through the 21st of 2016 as National Public Works Week in the city of Sheboygan and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contribution of public works officials and their staff that make every day to, uh, to our health, safety, and comfort and quality of life. Signed, Michael J. Vandersteen. David? Uh, I just want to I just want to say thank you very much for the proclamation and it's I'm very proud to be part of the Public Works Department for this fine community that we all are part of. We have a great group of employees that are very dedicated to improving Sheboygan as a better place to live. So um, I also want to just take this opportunity now that we're getting to the spring and that means construction season. So when you're out there 
Please be safe in construction zones. Uh, they're very dangerous. Numerous an accidents occur every year, injuring or even killing workers as well as citizens themselves. So be safe and thank you again. A few other items we want to re uh, remind our uh, citizens that uh, poll workers are needed by the city clerk's office for the primary election on August 9th and the general election on November 8th. These are paid positions and people can work either a full or a half day if they'd uh, like to uh, join that effort. Uh, there's going to be a public information meeting on uh, North Avenue construction which is scheduled for 2019. Uh, that'll be North Avenue from 15th Street to Calumet Drive. And that public open house on the 18th uh, will start at 4.30 and go on till 6, and they'll be held at, held at Maywood. Um, on Wednesday, the recycling drop-off at the Municipal Services Building will be closed on Wednesday from uh, 5.18. And, I, and Memorial Day is uh, on Monday the 30th, and it's going to be a big day of a lot of activities. A 9 o'clock parade from 7th and Superior. The parade will go up uh, 7th Street to Superior Avenue and then down 9th Street to Fountain Park. This year it's going to be including a brat fry and a ceremony at Fountain Park. We thank the uh, Kohler Credit Union employees for their organizing the parade and ceremony. And this will be followed then by another ceremony by the, at the Lao Hmong and American Veterans Memorial. This celebration begins at 11 o'clock at the Land Park and will include a T-28 flyover. We wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.20. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.9, uh, 3.10 has been withdrawn and including 311 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.6 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 uh, by finance, who is referred resolution number three of 1617 by Alderman Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish appropriation for the 2016 sidewalk and many storm sewer projects, recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Wolf. I make a motion to. Uh to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> 15 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by Strategic Fiscal Planning who met and reviewed and approved goals and parameters for the City Administrator's 2017 Executive Budget as identified by the City Administrator. There has been a request by the Committee of the Whole Chairman that be, be referred to the Committee of the Whole, so rather than accepting and adopting that, that will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. And uh, Alderman Heideman will let us know when that meeting is scheduled. Uh, other matters, City Attorney? 6.1 uh, is an RO from the City Clerk submitting a notice of claim from State Farm Insurance. Uh, 
uh, regarding alleged snowplow damage on March 1st, 2016. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 6.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue uh, discontinuing an alleged public way located within the bounds of city-owned lanes commonly known as the Shukert Farm property. That will lie over to July 5th. 6.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Debbie Desmoulin regarding the costs of the Aurora project and the Field of Dreams uh, transfer. That will lie over to our next meeting. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, that's going to be lying over to the next meeting. Is that is the information that she sent to us today, is that going to be going to any committee for review or is it just going to lie over? Uh, that decision will be made and on the agenda for the next meeting, Alderman. Thank you. 6.4 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2018. That'll be referred to law and licensing. And 6.5 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2016 and June 30th, 2018. That'll also go to law and licensing. Next, we'll move on to adjournment. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.